I prepared a little speech for you and I will read that. My dear swordsmen and swordswomen, dear delegates and officials of the IMA National Federations, dear friends, in the early 20th century, in 1930, nine countries gathered and founded the FIA, the Fédération Internationale des Crimes, it was in 1913. Sorry, I'm not sure. In the 20th century, 1913 was the foundation of the International Federation for Fencing. And I'm very proud to announce that today, actually, the constitution of our International Federation for Historical European Martial Arts. Yesterday, the delegates, founding members of the following countries, Spain, Hungary, uh, Slovakia, Slovenia, France, Austria, Poland, Belgium, and Switzerland, had a constitutive assembly here in Vienna, and today before you, they are going to sign the bylaws, and thus officially founding International Federation for Historical European Martial Arts, we call that by HEMA. This achievement as a background, the idea was raised almost 10 years ago, Already, and here in 2008, uh, 2008 in Vienna, during the Dragon event as well, a uh, commission of peers have presented the community with this project. By then, those who were there will remember, the project faced a shield wall. Today, the situation has changed, and more and more national bodies are in favor, I would say in need, of such an umbrella federation. During the recent years, at least 13 uh, European countries have founded a HEMA National Federation or governing body. And since last year in Dijon, a working group composed of Spain, Hungary, Slovakia, Slovenia, France, Austria, Poland, Belgium, Switzerland, Portugal, Sweden, Netherlands, and Germany has worked hard to present to you today the Constitution of International uh, Federation for Historical, Federation, uh, Historical European Martial Arts. Uh, it is just a matter of time before the name comes, we will also be able to join our international federation and we hope to get on board all European national HEMA bodies in the very near future, allowing us to work hand by hand towards a broad recognition of our activities on national and international level. First in Europe, and if it works, then in the rest of the world. Please, uh, while I'm speaking, uh, proceed with the signing. <laughs> Let me outline a few points. Uh, it is the main purpose of the High Clima, supporting and joining together the efforts of national bodies towards a recognition of our activities before the national governments, especially the so-called national sport authorities mainly driven by international, international Olympic Committee, National Office, or by the dedicated department of the government dealing with sport activities. Together, we are stronger if every country has its own specific, uh, together we are stronger, and if every country has its own specificities and regulations towards such a recognition, we will be regarded with more consideration if we are part of an official international movement. <coughs> For the time being, none of our members are officially recognized by their governments. None. These processes take time. But we are all working in the same directions. In five year times, in <coughs> five years time, we will be applying for the membership at the International Umbrella Federation for Sports, gathering both Olympic and non-Olympic sports. If IFIMA achieves the Sport Accord membership, and thus become an official international partner for high-level sports decision-makers, a lot of our work on the national level will be eased. Education, grants, insurance, media coverage, sport equipment development, and many more things will hopefully be backed up and more inclined for collaborations or inquiries. It is about giving HEMA a proper place, allowing it to be parted from modern uh, sport fencing, wrestling, or boxing. It is about to give us serious ground and precedent to define what we, are, what we do in front of decision makers who have no idea what we're doing. Uh, it is about to define our needs and to work towards providing professional solutions for those needs. 
We are willing to make HEMA future better and easier. And more important, legalized and recognized. For the amazing efforts and involvement, I shall thank the people sitting behind me, signing, who invested time, money, and work at their own expenses for you, HEMA practitioners. For you, not for their potential glory or fame, for you. They are not <laughs>
before even the appearance of these terms, uh, those words. The difference can be traced back even 1,200 years before with the famous Ben Hassan uh, depiction on the Egyptian graves. Whatever you believe, this difference between martial art and martial sports existed probably from the beginning on and persisted throughout the course of history. It still exists <coughs> The martial art side shifted from its original purpose since we don't need training in killing with ancient weaponry or our own body today anymore. It doesn't matter what you believe actually, the facts are that most of us train in a gym with weapon simulators and protective gear. And some of us are entering competition on local, national or international level. It is fair to say that we are practicing HIMA as a martial sport. <coughs> this assessment doesn't take away anything. And I think that the most of us would recognize that competition is a tool in our toolbox. If you believe that is the most important tool, or if you believe that's the less important tool, that doesn't matter. We know that it's a sensible matter, and we, we resolved it as follows in our bylaws. Let me quote the first objective of the high Hima. <coughs> to promote and to develop historical European martial arts as a sport and as an art at all levels, reconstructions, revival, and preservations, end of quote. And since I read the first objective, that would allow anyone to be happy with their definition of sport or art, let me read the other objectives to give you the whole picture. Second objective, to coordinate and to promote research and studies in the field of historical European martial arts. Third one, to develop specific services for its member and provide them with assistance and support, especially in terms of recognition by the national Olympic committees or national sport authorities in various countries. Fourth, to coordinate international congresses and competitions. Fifth, to compile the different national programs towards training and certification of judges, training and certification of trainers, and regulations for safety issues. And sixth, final one, to promote closer links amongst its members uh, and between its members and other sport organizations. <coughs> if you want to know more, if you are a board member of the National Federation or governing body, you may want to join. If you are an individual seduced by the idea we are supporting and willing to offer your competences towards achievements of our goal, or if you are just curious, please visit our website that will be up very soon and come or contact us. I think I would need any effort you are willing to make. Please help us. In this first year, we shall, amongst other things, develop a graphical identity, form commissions to discuss the means to achieve our goals, review new membership applications, and provide documents. IFIMA is a not-for-profit <coughs> democratic organization that needs you because it works for you. Thanks for your attention.